Okay. Yep. Jesus, in this great sacrament, you nourish and strengthen our holiness, that we might walk in the light of one faith and in one communion of love. Our Lord gave Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Holy Family Parish and this celebration of the Holy Mass. We have a few announcements. Today is World Mission Sunday. We celebrate this day by remembering our baptismal call, bring the gospel to all. The collection today supports the work and witness of the Mission Church as it provides for priests, religious, and lay leaders in the mission fields around the world. Thank you for your generosity. Extra envelopes can be found in the narthex. October is Domestic Abuse Awareness Month. 
please see the Christian Mothers display in the narthex if you would like to support the domestic abuse programs in our state. The history of the Diocese of Green Bay books are available in the narthex. Hard co cover copies for adults and soft cover, easy to read version for children are displayed for review. This would make a good Christmas present. A free will offering is requested. Undoubtedly, we have spent much of the past week doing things others have asked us to do. Work for our bosses, errands for our spouses, homework for our teachers, care for our children or for our parents. Hopefully, we have spent part of the past week also doing the things God asks us to do, though they may overlap quite a bit with the rest. Here and now, however, we dedicate this time to God. Let us reflect on all the gifts God has given us and lift our hearts and voices in thanksgiving and praise. Our opening hymn is All the Earth, number 308. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours, your majesty and sincerity of heart, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his Cyrus, whose right hand I grasp, subduing nations before him and making kings run in his service, opening doors before him and leaving the gates unbarred. For the sake of Jacob, my servant of Israel, my chosen one, I have called you by your name, giving you a title, though you knew me not. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God beside you. It is I who arm you though you know me not, so that toward the rising and the setting of the sun, people may know that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, there is no other. The word of the Lord.
the beginning of the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the Church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love and endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father, knowing, brothers and sisters loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to the Lord. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. And you do, are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. Them, whose image is this and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. At that he said to them, Then pay to repay Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In our gospel today, we are at a very dark time of Jesus' life. The very religious leaders that are surrounding him have come together and are plotting to kill Jesus. They just needed a plan. In our gospel today, we see a very well-prepared trap to corner Jesus. It said that the Pharisees and the Herodians came together and made a plot. Now, you have to know that these two groups hated each other. The Herodians and the Pharisees were enemies because of what they stood for. But they came together for this one purpose, to get rid of Jesus. Before we can understand the trap, we have to understand who the Pharisees were. We have to recall that at Jesus' time, the Romans had sent our, their armies and conquered the entire region. The entire Middle East was living under Roman occupation. And because of this, the Pharisees, who wanted a Jewish king to rule, hated the Romans. And since they hated the Romans, they, were, they hated the tax. Privately, they would all say, do not pay the tax. 
They were the religious leaders, and they actually paying the tax was against the law of the God. So if Jesus paid the tax, then the Pharisees would attack them from a religious perspective, and they would encourage the people to kill them, to stone them as a traitor against their own faith. The Herodians were on the opposite side. The Herodians were pro-Roman. In modern terms, we would call them the collaborators. They were the Jewish people who were co-opted to work for the occupying army. They were the puppet government. They were for the tax because they got their cut. That's where they got their money. So if Jesus said, do not pay the tax, then it was treason. He would be arrested and killed as a revolutionary against the state. So as you can see, when they got together and both approached Jesus at the same time, it was a well-placed trap. Jesus was stuck. If he said, pay the tax, he would be attacked. It's don't pay the tax, you'd be arrested and killed. There wasn't a good answer for Jesus to give. But his response was brilliant. First thing he said was, give me a Roman coin. They had a Roman coin. That means they weren't using the, the Jewish shekel. They were using the Roman coins, the, the money of the occupier. And, and they were cooperating already with the government. Then he asked, whose image is on the coin? The image was of Caesar, the Roman emperor. He then says, repay to Caesar what is Caesar's. If you're using his coin, it's his. Give it back to him. But give to God what belongs to God. So if the image it determines that it belongs to Caesar, what is it that, that has God's image on it? Every human being is created in the image and likeness of God. That's where God's image is, not on a coin. It's on each and every human being ever created. So what Jesus is saying, I don't care about that tax question. That's not the question. The question is, give to God what is God's. What has God's image on it, give it to God. And I want you to give yourself to God. So he never really answers the tax question. Rather, he calls us to a much more profound thing about giving ourselves to God. Now, as I reflected on this, I thought, how are the, all the different ways we can give ourselves to God? But then I thought, it's an interesting question, though, that was still brought up. How are we to relate to that government? How are we to give to Caesar what is Caesar's? We're all here. We have local government, state government. So we have all this. How do we as Catholics relate? For that, I want to go to a saint. Saint Thomas More. If you want to know the story of More, I would encourage you to watch, to watch the uh, movie Man for All Seasons. It won Best Academy Award, including Best Actor and Best Film. Uh, so I would encourage you to watch that film, uh, Man for All Seasons. It'll tell you the story of Thomas. He was the Chancellor of England under King Henry VIII. Thomas was not a priest. He was a lawyer. He was involved in politics. And he lived his faith. Now, the king got in an argument with the pope. So the king decided to make himself the head of the church and to break away from the Catholic church. Thomas, he, he told his disagreements to the king. He said, I am a loyal and faithful servant to the king, but always God's first. 
But he continued to work. Now, as time went by, the king actually wanted to consolidate his power. So what he had everyone do is sign an oath, breaking from the church and joining the Church of England. Thomas, again, remained loyal to the king, but he refused to sign the oath. He actually said, I would die for my country and my king, but I will not give my soul. He stood up and said, I cannot leave the Catholic faith, and I cannot leave the successor of St. Peter, who is the Pope. He saw how important it was to have that Pope, the successor of St. Peter, so that to protect the church. and and to protect it from outside influences like a king. What was odd is Thomas didn't even like who the Pope was. He was not a very good person in that day, but it was the office of the papacy and the Catholic Church that were so essential. Now, Thomas's friends, his family, uh, the king himself, all tried to talk him into, just sign it. It doesn't mean too much. Just sign it. One of his friends in, in the movie, it was one of my favorite lines. Uh, the, the one, a duke came up to him and said, come on, we're all signing it. Just sign it out of fellowship. We all did it. Join your friends. Thomas responded, And when we die, and you are sent to heaven for doing your conscience, and I am sent to hell for not doing mine, will you come to me for fellowship? In the end, Thomas did refuse to sign. The king began by just throwing him into prison to get him to sign. He still would not sign he was beheaded and killed. He gave to Caesar what was Caesar's, but he gave to God what was God's. He knew what his faith was, and he had a correctly formed conscience. And that is where we as Christians need to put our focus. We need to correctly form our conscience. And then then Thomas made decisions because he knew what was true and he knew what was good. And more than anything else, Thomas knew what, that, that he had to give to God what is God's. The Herodians had a plan. The plan was their plan, not God's plan. They were going to trap Jesus and use his own answers, no matter what it was, to try to kill him. In his response, called them to give their lives to God. God called them to to, to, uh, live in that faith in God. They didn't respond. All of us, we also have our own plans. We plan day in and day out. And, but, and, and we, how many of us have our entire lives planned? But we need to ask, is our plan my will, what I want, my desires? Or is it God's will and building the kingdom? So I would just ask you in your prayer, on a regular basis, just sort of reflect on your life. I just ask that question. Am I giving to God what is God's? We are Christians, so let us now publicly profess our faith. I believe in one God, Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all visible and invisible, 
I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. What for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us turn to God with our prayers and our petition. That all the clergy may be strengthened and edified by the prayers of the church throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all leaders of state may be guided by the, the Almighty in the just use of power. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who witness domestic violence, especially children, that they may understand that violence is never an expression of love, is never acceptable, and must never be imitated. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the times we are pressured to compromise respect for human life, May the Lord strengthen our courage and resolve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That Christ may have the hearts and homes of those gathered here. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Gerald Sloma, whose funeral mass will be celebrated next Friday, and for Tim Glazo, for whom this mass is offered. May they rest eternally in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God in heaven, we come before you with these prayers and the prayers we hold deep in our hearts. Grant them through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing, Christ be beside me. It's 295. Christ Christ be Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord Jesus Christ sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the love of his holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, 
a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying actions of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give to the Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you. Out and we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying... Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of all worlds, for by the cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and David our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Come into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, 
and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is Yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. May the Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lord, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those who are unable to be present at the celebration of Mass today, a prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. 
I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The Son of Man has come in to give his life as a ransom for the many. The communion song is number 302. I'm sorry, it's number 232, Lord of the Dance, number 232.
just a couple of announcements. Uh, first, this, uh, starting this afternoon all the way through next Friday, I will be gone on retreat. Uh, every priest canonically has to take a five to seven day retreat every year. Uh, mine was originally scheduled in June with all of the other priests of the diocese, but that being canceled, I had to plan one on my own. So that will be this week. So I will be praying for all of you and hope for the same that you could be praying for me. For, well, that means there will not be Mass at 8.30. However, every day we will have Liturgy of the Hours at 8.30. If you have never prayed Liturgy of the Hours, I would encourage you to come and pray. It's an official Liturgy of the Church. It's not just a devotion. It's not just a, a, a type of prayer. It is an official Liturgy of the Church. So I would encourage you to come uh, some of the, some people who are older may remember Vespers from a number of years ago. This is just a morning version of that. So I would encourage you to come. Also on Friday, I mean Thursday, uh, that normal 5.30 to 7 when we have adoration and confession, there won't be confession, but there will still be adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. So if you would like to come and pray, and especially at the end with benediction, that will still be happening on Thursday. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from the participation of heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is number 302, Sing with all the saints in glory. Sing with